Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Om J. Lakhani. I'm a consultant endocrinologist working in Ahmedabad. First and foremost, before I begin, I'd like to thank you all for an overwhelming response to my Tech Talks 1.0 form. It is this love of yours that really keeps me going. In the first of the series of Tech Talks 1.0, I'm going to talk about how to use technology to write a research paper or an article or a thesis. If you are a researcher or a postgraduate student writing an article or a thesis, watching this video will save you a lot of time, efforts and money. But before we go ahead with the video, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a great platform that we are developing called decisionsmed.com. Now decisionsmed.com is a free platform for patients to take basic clinical decisions and to be referred to a correct specialist at the end of the process. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you a demonstration of decisionsmed.com. So stick till the end to see something really exciting and fascinating. Since scientists and doctors are accustomed with a specific format, I have broken this video into the usual sections which are part of any good research paper. So you have the abstract, the introduction, the materials and methods, the results, the discussion and conclusion. Right. So this entire video on how to write a research paper more effectively using technology is broken down into the usual way of an original article. What you are watching right now is the abstract. If you are interested in skipping a particular section, you can use the timestamps which are given below. Writing a research article is both painful as well as extremely rewarding. Publish or perish is something which has been told to us frequently. However, publishing an article is a difficult job requiring the creative aspects like designing and writing, but also some mundane aspects like adding references and formatting the text. Something like writing a cover letter is also sometimes extremely time consuming. Collaboration is also very important and many of us write articles with several authors, many of whom may be separated by distance. Then comes the difficult part of facing a rejection. If your article is rejected, you need to then submit it to another journal which may require to change the reference style and the format completely. But friends, fear not, there is a perfect solution for it. One simple open source platform that solves all these problems and more. The best part of this is that it does not require you to download any software and it is completely free. The thing I am talking about is a website which is known as manuscripts.io. I'll do a deep dive into this platform and show you all the bells and whistles of this platform which will make your research article writing process simple and effective. You'll also compare it to popular uh, citation platforms like Mendeley and Zotero in the discussion part. So keep watching. Now let's talk about the materials and methods. I'll first give you the introduction to manuscripts.io, what it is about and how do you start using it. We'll also talk a little bit about the Google Scholar Chrome extension, which is very useful when used in collaboration with manuscripts.io. So the software that I'm going to talk about is known as manuscripts.io. Okay, so this is the website. It's a completely web-based system. You don't need to download any specific software. You can use your Chrome browser which is here or you can use any browser and you can directly use the software on a browser so you don't need any software to download specific software or anything to else to download however you need to download one thing uh, which works very well with manuscripts.io that is a chrome extension for google scholar you can see here this is google scholar button or google scholar chrome extension this is available on chrome extension store so you can directly google it you can do google scholar 
Chrome extension. Here you go. And it will open up the uh, thing on uh, Google Scholar uh, on the uh, Chrome Web Store. And you can directly download it. Uh, instead of remove from Chrome, there will be option to install and download. So it's when you just click on it, you will get the Google Scholar Chrome button over here. So I'll tell you why Google Scholar Chrome button is very useful along with manuscripts.io, but more about that in a minute. So let's come back to manuscripts.io. So this is the platform. Now this works both as a it works as a as an editor. It works for collaboration. You can also use it as a citation tool. You can also use it for making uh, complex research projects. So this is what this entire thing is. It also has built-in templates for various popular uh, journals. Okay. So first you'll have to sign up here. So click on sign up. Okay, so this is the sign ups page and you can sign up to manuscripts.io using either your Orchid ID, your Google account or your Twitter account. Now, a lot of you would be familiar with Orchid ID. If you are an avid researcher, it, it's a good idea to get an Orchid ID for yourself. Orchid ID is kind of your uh, identification number or like an Aadhaar card for researchers. So every time you conduct any research or you submit a paper, you can include the Orchid ID and it easily shows up on your Google Scholar uh, platform or it shows up in any of the uh, you know searches very easily. Also, uh, I believe Orchid ID can also be used for sign up in manuscripts.io and many other services uh, which use the Orchid, any research services like ResearchGate which also use Orchid ID uh, for sign up as well as for identification. You can of course directly use your Google uh, account and your Twitter account. So today we are going to use the Google account. Uh, you don't need any specific you know sign up to do you can just use your Google account directly so click on this it will show you the list of your Google accounts uh, I already have uh, signed up with this Google account but I'll sign up with a new one just to uh, show it to you so I clicked on uh, my one of my Google accounts it directly connects to this now it shows you registration confirmation uh, all these details so by signing up, you may cause uh, you may use manuscripts and other applications, so on and so forth. Uh, this is an option to opt in for any kind of announcement or not. Let's not click that. Let's click confirm. So when you click confirm, it opens you to this page. This is the projects page. So when you're making a new, uh, you're starting a new article or starting a new research paper or thesis, you need to first create a project right so you click on create your first project now this is the beautiful part right this is where it gives you option for various templates so you can choose a research article you can use an essay you can choose a dissertation you can choose a book a grant application a blog post a manual right so you can choose any of these options let's say I choose a research article. So let's right? say so I want to by write an original article. So I'll search for original article. So here you have a lot of options. Original article, original research article, so on. Let's choose one. And you click on add manuscript. So it creates the original article format. Uh, this is a typical format uh, which we use for writing original articles. So you have introduction, materials and methods, results, conclusions. Uh, you can of course modify this based on your liking so let's say we want to add discussion so we'll go to add new subsection or uh, here we go uh, we'll add a, a new section after results okay so this will be discussion right so you have this introduction materials and methods results discussion and conclusions this is already pre-formatted right so you don't need to uh, use this every single time you can have this as a pre-format and then you know uh, use it for uh, you know your purposes so this is how it really is very useful uh, that you don't have to write the format every time of course you can uh, you know create a uh, yeah, so let's say we are going to delete this project and create a new project. Okay, 
so let's say you're creating uh, you know uh, a new project where you don't want this format so you can say add empty so when you click on add empty it creates an empty project and then you can add your sections as per your liking let's say abstract and so you go here add new section introduction so on and so forth right so this is how you can create your own uh, format now what the good thing is that these sections and if you have a subsection for example new subsection uh, let's say ideas right so you have this section and subsection and this clearly shows in this this uh, you know thing on the left side where you can clearly see this so when you're navigating it especially if you have a large document for example you're writing a thesis or a dissertation if you have a large document uh, sometimes it's very difficult to navigate so you can navigate through this you can navigate to specific paragraphs also uh, specific subsections specific sections so if it's a large manuscript you can actually move between these sections to really get an idea about what you're dealing with so now we'll see how to add a list of authors or how to add a list of uh, people whom you want to collaborate now let's say you want to add a new author uh, you can go here and click on edit authors and I already have one author here and this is uh, somebody random so let's say I add a new author his name is John Smith okay so I say uh, add John Smith now if there's an existing John Smith if you if there is a frequent collaborator you are working with previously uh, he will show up in the list uh, if not you can add him as a uh, collaborator or add him to a list of authors let's say we want to add him to as a collaborator you can send an email to him to collaborate with you so when I click on this I get three options I can add him as a owner as a writer and a viewer uh, owner is a one he's just like you he can make changes to the project he can uh, modify it delete it invite other people so on and so forth as a writer he can only do modification to the project but he cannot work like an administrator and as a viewer he'll be able to just view the project without seeing uh, without modifying it so he will not be able to make any changes so let's say if i make him a owner and let's say i send him an email so let's say this is the email address of john smith i send i click on send invitation and it will send an e uh, invitation on this email address uh, as soon as the uh, you know email is sent then he'll be able to follow the steps and uh, be added as a collaborator so this is how you can invite somebody to be an author uh, this is one of the best parts about manuscripts.io that it helps in collaboration so everybody can at the real time uh, work simultaneously just like google docs but better than google docs uh, so that you can all work simultaneously add your references citations uh, work on the editing aspects simultaneously i know what my co-author is doing my co-author can see my work so it, it's very useful in that sense uh, you can also, you know, uh, uh, make changes to the author uh, uh, list uh, by clicking here, right? You can, uh, you have a list here now. So John uh, J, uh, random number is, has been added. Let's say, let's call him, let's complete the name. Let's say John Smith. Now, if I want to add more details about the author, I can make him a corresponding author, joint author with the next author included in the author's list, so on and so forth. Uh, you can I can even include his collaboration what he has done right some uh, journals require this uh, what is the contribution of each of the authors so let's say uh, he has added in data curation you can add more details about it uh, right now since uh, you know John Smith has not uh, come as a collaborator I can just invite him as a collaborator from here itself so this is the more thing details I can do about it uh, I can also delete the author and I do this and it removes the author from the list so this is how you can do it now you can also add affiliations to this right again it becomes very simple so let's say i am working at zydus hospital okay so i create zydus hospital uh, and then you can add changes to the affiliation department so department of endocrinology address uh, and so on and so forth right so you can add affiliations here and when i do this this shows up in my uh, cv over here you can see see it gives a link uh, it, it says gives a, a, a superscript number to it and says department of endocrinology Zydus hospital again this becomes very easy when you are adding uh, you know some of your projects 
and and uh, you know this really helps to uh, have if you have especially if you have many authors the affiliations of the authors can be very easily added over here now we'll be discussing how we'll be adding citations and i as i discussed before citation is the most important aspect of any of the papers because people find adding citations to be very difficult and extremely time consuming especially if you are doing a large project so it is always advisable to use a citation manager now for a longest time ever i have been using a very popular citation manager called mendeley you can see here it's already there on my uh, google chrome however since i started using manuscripts.io uh, i have moved away from mendeley and moved to uh, you know using the inbuilt citation manager which is there in this application so i still use mendeley mendeley gives me uh, you know an opportunity to create a beautiful uh, library for all my citations so i store the citations on mendeley but for citation itself i use manuscripts.io's inbuilt system itself now i'm going to show you how you can uh, you know use citations in uh, manuscripts.io so this is where the google scholar button which i told you about is very useful so let's say i'm writing a paper on glucocorticoid induced hyperglycemia and i have one particular paper in mind and i want to cite that to my project so i've written something so let's say this is the text now i want to add a citation here and let's search for the citation so you can search for it in google okay so this is the citation i have in mind so i search for it on google okay now it opens one article which i'm particular article which i'm looking for let's say this is the article i'm looking for and it's available on pubmed so i go here i click on it so it opens up the article on pubmed right now it's very simple now all i have to do is click on the google scholar button so I click on the google scholar button and it shows the citation here right so it immediately recognizes the page and it adds the citation here now this is the button you need to use right so the one on the right side which is with with uh, uh, you know a quotation mark so you click on this so it opens different formats in which citation can be used let's say i want to cite in vancouver but really does not matter what citation you can use, uh, you want to use you can directly copy the citation from here or for manuscripts.io this is what you need to use you click on refman so when you click on refman it downloads a file and i have asked them to directly open the file on mendeley uh, this is of course a optional step so what it does is it opens the file on mendeley but it right now has downloaded a file right so it has downloaded a file called uh, scholar.ris right this is the file it will download and you need to you can uh, see look for this file on your uh, on your system okay so here you go so this is the file which which it has downloaded uh, it is saved in a ris format now how do i put this on manuscripts.io okay so i go to manuscripts.io now this is where i want to add the citation so i go to insert citation okay now I want to import it from a file right so I click on import from file I go to the downloads page this is the citation I wanted so I click on scholar.ris file and click open so here it saves the citation right now I want to cite it so I select this okay it shows a green tick and I click cite so it adds the citation as a superscript here and it immediately adds it as a bibliography in the bottom right so this is how easy it is to uh, cite anything now if i uh, you know change the position of this and let's say i want to add another citation in its system right so again i take this article use the refman and download it like i said it directly i have set up a system where it directly goes to uh, mendeley and it saves it in mendeley 
Nonetheless, let's go to the uh, manuscripts.io and I want to paste the citation over here. So I do the same process again, download, uh, insert citation, import from file. Now it has saved it as a second file here, scholar1.ris. So I click that, right? And I click cite. So automatically what it has done is it has taken that as number one and the other is, is number two, right? So it has done this entire process on its own. So now we are going to discuss how we are going to export this project or export your manuscript after it's been completed. So this is the manuscript, let's say this is the final manuscript we have. So what you can do is you click on project and you go ahead export the manuscript. Now the great part about manuscripts.io is that you can export it in various formats. So you can send it as a PDF, you can send it as a Microsoft Word, uh, EPUB, Markdown, so on and so forth. You can also save this file as an archive known as manuscripts archive and you can then access this uh, whenever you want or you can have a extra copy for you to save. So this is how you can export it. Now most of us export as a Microsoft Word so let's do that. So let's click on Microsoft Word. It says exporting manuscript and it automatically downloads the file as a Microsoft Word file. So you can see this file over here. We will just open the file. It will save it again in your default uh, case. So now you can open this file in a Microsoft Word. So here you have this beautiful formatting. What you see here is the title. This is the name of the author. Now if you have added the credential, it will show below. The introduction and whatever other sections you have and the references. And their references are beautifully formatted. Again, I'll tell you, you can also change the style of references here. Uh, this is in a Vancouver style. You can change it to whatever relevant style uh, you want to change to in the manuscripts IO itself, right? So you can make the changes in this. Uh, so these are the various things. Uh, of course, you can you can add many other things like table of contents, keywords, right? Let's say I'm adding keywords here. So it automatically makes a section for keywords. You can add an abstract in the beginning, right? So you can do all that. So this is how it would do, uh, you know, the entire process uh, in, in your system, right? So this is manuscripts.io. Now let's say want, you want to add a picture, you can also do that, right? So if you want to add a picture here or a table here, okay, uh, let's talk, insert a picture, select an image file. Let's say, so this is a, let's say there's an image over here. So let's say we are adding the image here. So you can add the image here. Again, when you export it, the image also gets exported along with that. You can also add the caption here, right? Okay. Uh, let's say you want to add a table. So this is the table, right? So you can create a table over here uh, with your header one, header two, the footer notes, etc. right? Uh, you can, of course, you know, uh, hide caption, uh, so on and so forth, right? So these are the various things. You can just play around with it and you can find more data. Again, let's export this again after uh, we have added the pictures and everything. Okay, so you had the keywords being exported. Now here, hey, there you go. You have the picture here with the caption. And then of course you have the table which was so you can do this. Also, the beautiful part is that you know it has done the formatting on its own. You know you need a, a specific paragraph, uh, uh, you know, system here, right? It should be spaces in the paragraphs. This is all there. It's all made uh, automatically, right? It also uses a good font for the entire thing. Now let's come to the discussion part. In this section, we are going to discuss some other software that are used for writing a research paper. We talked about manuscripts.io as a citation manager in itself. But there, there are various other citation managers which are available and which are quite popular. One very popular citation manager, which I myself use in my own research, 
is Mendeley. Mendeley is a free software and a very powerful platform. I'll show you some features of Mendeley. So Mendeley has three components. This is the desktop application. The second very important component is the uh, application which is there for the Chrome or that is the Chrome extension. The third important application or third important component is the citation uh, plugin which is there for Microsoft Word. So these are the three important components. Now we'll see how we'll use these three components to find a citation, to add it to our Mendeley and then to cite it in your Word document. So let's say this is the document that we have chosen, right? So this is, let's say this is from Indian Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism. So what we'll do is we'll first extract the reference from this, right? So you click on the Mendeley, uh, you know, uh, the Chrome extension. So it will automatically detect a reference from there. It will also add a PDF if it is present, right? So you select on this. Let's say I don't want to add a PDF. I select the uh, folder in which I want to add, right? Let's say my publications. And then I click add. So it will automatically select the uh, citation and then add it to the relevant folder. Now you open that and when you see this, let's look at the my publication folder and there you go. So there you go. You find the article here in the reference over here, right? So it is there. Now it is stored safely in my Mendeley uh, application. Now let's say I want to cite it, right, on my Word document. So say, So this is what I've added and I want to add the citation over here. So you go to insert or edit citation. Then you can either search for the citation over here or you can directly go to Mendeley. Let's say like, let's go to the Mendeley. You select the citation and click on cite above. So click on cite. It automatically formats the citation and it adds it over here with the reference number. Now you can change the style of citation by selecting over here. And if you want to add the bibliography, just click insert bibliography it will insert the bibliography. Let's say I want to change the style from Vancouver to let's say uh, uh, NLM style. You click on this and automatically update it to a different style format. You can of course change, uh, you know, the numbers are also automatically referenced. So let's say uh, I add another citation before this, the reference number will change from one to two here based on the sequence. So let's do that. added another citation so automatically this one becomes number two so this is how easy it is to use Mendeley now Mendeley is definitely great it's it's what I've been using for a long time even before I started using uh, manuscripts.io and I do believe that Mendeley solves a lot of problem as far as uh, the citation process is concerned but the problem is that you have the plugin available for only limited applications so you can only use it with Microsoft Word or a few more applications and hence it has its own limitations. So this is where Mendeley stands. Another popular citation manager is EndNote. In my opinion, EndNote is the best citation manager, but unfortunately it is not free. Then you have Zotero. Now Zotero is very popular. It is another useful citation manager. It is very similar to Mendeley. You can use Zotero for Google Docs, which makes it very useful, especially if you're collaborating. And that is where Zotero uh, differentiates from Mendeley. Mendeley is not available for Google Docs, whereas Zotero is available for Google Docs. So please mention in your comment section about what is your favorite citation manager and which is the one that you use regularly. Now let's talk about some other software that I use when I'm doing my research and writing a paper. So a very important software that I use extensively is Grammarly. It's a, it's something which I use daily, not necessarily for just writing research paper. Grammarly is a very sophisticated grammar and spell checking tool. It is more sophisticated than the built-in spell checker for Word. It also uses artificial intelligence to gain insights into your style of writing and give you better suggestions for using it. So let's come to the conclusions. 
so today we discuss about the various software and applications and platforms which are available for writing a great research article the three which I recommend that you should use are manuscripts.io which is a completely free and a complete writing platform for writing a manuscript right from the design to the complete execution then you have Mendeley which is a free and powerful citation manager and the third is Grammarly which is a grammar and spell checking tool so friends as I had promised you before, I'm going to show you a demonstration of a new venture called decisionsmed.com. Now the website's name is quite simple. It's decisions, decisions med, decisions s med.com. It's a very straightforward uh, name. And our tagline is clinical decisions simplified. So what we're going to do is we'll start with the begin section. Okay. You'll have to sign up to the website first. You can use your Google ID to sign up it's very simple to do it right uh, if you have a google account or in fact a facebook account you will be able to do it straightforward right no problems at all so you use your google account to sign up okay and then you go to begin and here is where you have uh this questions questionnaires this forms uh apps you can say uh, which are available to you uh right now we have mainly in the field of endocrinology so you can have do I have a thyroid problem that is based on symptoms? Do I have a thyroid problem based on your blood work? Do I have low testosterone? This is very important for males. Uh, again, based on the lab on clinical symptoms. And do I have low testosterone based on lab tests? We are developing new forms uh, every week. So keep checking for development of new forms. Now remember, these are mainly for patients. Or in fact, if you're a doctor and you want to self-assess for your own personal use or for some patient of yours or a relative of yours you can use all this very easily so this is the entire process which we have now we can click on any of the form and let's click on the thyroid one so when you click on any of these forms it opens this questionnaire Remember this app can be used, this website can be used on a mobile platform also or on your laptop. Okay, so let's click start. There you go. So the first question it asks you is a legal disclaimer. You'll have to agree to that. Okay, uh, remember, so this form is mainly for checking for symptoms. So we'll be just, you know, we don't have any reports and uh, we'll just be basically checking for symptoms. If you already have a pre-existing thyroid problem, we will not be using this form right so we'll agree to this now first we have to enter your age so let's say my age is 36 years okay i'm a male do i have a swelling in front of the neck no i my eyes bulging out no do i have unintentional weight loss uh, despite having normal or increased appetite no so you click on these symptoms as you go along right uh and then you will see right okay so these are the other signs, right? Let's say none of the above. So what it says in the end, right? It tells you you're unlikely to have a thyroid problem. What would you like to do next? Would you like to consult a specialist online? Fill the form again, try some other forms. Let's say I want to consult a specialist. I want, I, I still feel that, you know, I have a problem. So it opens up this page. Right now, I just have my, uh, you know, and my wife, uh, who is also my co-founder uh, here. Uh, so you can again click on consult online it takes me to the online consultation page of mine now what I need your help is at two steps the first is we want to develop more forms both for endocrinology and for other specialities let's say you you are a neurologist or a neurophysician and, and you want to create a form about should I get an MRI done for my headache uh, or or could my headache be a brain tumor right so this could be there are some frequently asked questions by patients themselves so if you want to try any of these you know this is how you could do it and the second place where i need your help is to have uh, you know more online consultation people right so right now you know it's just me and my wife but we'd like to add you as well right uh, and the same page uh, we would also like to uh, you know allow for patients to uh, you know get in touch with you offline so you know in physical consultation so it's not just online consultation uh, which which will be providing also we'd like to validate these forms clinically so you know once you get a referral to this 
uh, we'd like to see whether whether our clinical decision making made any sense and whether it correlated with the lab test which the patient had or the uh, ultimate diagnosis which the patient made so this is about decisionsmed.com uh, remember we are in very early stages of development so this is just a very early stage development uh, you know we are still we are opening it up for patients because we want to validate our forms however at the same time we are still in an early development stage and your suggestions your guidance your help would be very useful right so you can all send your uh, you know uh, comments uh, uh, whatever suggestions you have to this email address i'm just pointing it out here at the rate gmail.com okay so this is the email address we have decisions met at the rate gmail.com very straightforward uh, send your suggestions to me uh, and i'm looking forward to it i need your help to develop this this could be the next big thing in healthcare and if you are with me you'll be able to do it very very uh, you know uh, in a in a very well refined manner Thank you so much.